So I've decided to up my bass game. Even though I have the 6x9s in the lids already, there's always room for more bass without sounding like a jackass with a sub. Plus this gives me a chance to make another video. So I did a ton of research and I opted for these Hertz SV200Ls. Not to be confused with the 200.1 or the 200 Neo, which are more of a mid driver. The 200 L's are a mid bass driver with a frequency response of 45 Hertz to 4.5 K. The sensitivity is 94.5 decibels and they'll take 250 Watts continuous with the two inch voice coil. Now this thing has a paper cone, so it's not the most ideal speaker to be putting on a motorcycle, but I don't care. I love the specs of this thing and I'm going to give it a go. I'm pretty much a fair weather rider anyways. I'll throw a little silicone spray on there. I'm sure we'll be fine. I do like the weight of it. I'm a big fan of the ferrite magnet. I just think they sound warmer than the neodymiums, but that's just me. I'd be interested to know how you guys feel about it. Do you prefer the ferrites over the neos? The neos over the ferrites? Does it matter? Can you really tell a difference? Let me know in the comments, because I'm curious if people will even care if they're neodymiums or ferrites or not. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just old school. So, those are the mid bass drivers I'm going to use and I'm crossing my fingers they sound killer. To install them I'm going to use these SPL Beggar Audios. <laughs> I love this spray painted logo on there that's awesome. These are the install rings. They make rings for 8 inch, 10 inch and uh, 6 by 9s. They do have a website but it looks like they exclusively sell through Amazon and eBay and uh, they make rings for the front of the bags and the back of the bags. Um, these ones are obviously the right front. It's nice that they actually write that on there. And they're made in America. Now, if you ask them, and I did, they'll tell you that it's made out of an industrial-grade, semi-rigid marine plastic. Now, I'm not here to tell you anything different. Uh, probably the main selling point for me was the included grills. Uh, they're stamped, so they will conform to the inside of the bags. Uh, I think they could have been a little more heavy-duty just a little bit but uh they look good i don't have a problem with them at all uh, they also come with some nice stainless bolts and nylon locking nuts that's always nice to have those included so that's what i'll be using to install the hertz into the bags uh, i hope you enjoy the video and let's head out to the garage So pretty much the first thing you're going to notice about this kit is that when they stamp out the grill, it's really not very accurate. You can see that there's all kinds of stuff hanging out of the edge. So first thing I'm going to do is trim that up. Okay, now it's off to the bags. Uh, you can see I've mocked it up here with my trusty paper towel roll. I'm just double checking to make sure that the 6x9 that's hanging down from the lids is going to clear. Uh, we got lots of room there, so I'm good. Next is to line up the speaker exactly the way I want it. I want those spade connectors facing forwards so that if I throw a hoodie or whatever in the bag, it doesn't snag them on the way out. And then uh, mark the ring.
So, right about now, you're probably looking at this bag thinking, uh, where's the tape? <laughs> where's the tape? Yeah, I, uh, I forgot the tape. I should probably add that SPL does send out a sheet of instructions on how to get this hole done. But uh, I don't personally own a 90 degree drill or a attachment. So I'm doing it this way because I know that this hole will be absolutely bang on when I'm finished. As long as I can stay inside the lines, of course. Now in this shot I've already cleaned the outside pen off and I've retraced the hole on the inside so now I'm just cleaning it up that last little bit and smoothing out my cut. I get caught up in the work and don't always remember to turn the camera on or put it in the right spot. Here I'm just trimming off the excess plastic that's melted on the inside. Um, nobody's going to see a couple of scratches on the inside of this bag. Nobody's going to feel my shame but me. <laughs> okay, so I bolted the speaker in. So everything's nice and tight, but there's a pretty serious gap. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just chew out a little bit right here. See if I can get it to sit down properly. So it's a lot better than it was. Still not perfect, but we'll let the sealant do the rest. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Alright, just dry fitting the second one. And it's sitting there pretty good. I did have to take out a little bit right, just right in here. But uh, it's not bad at all. I did have to trim the grill again, because once I tightened it down, it seemed to spread out a little more. No big deal. I'm probably going to cut the video here and pretend that the bottom one was easy to do. Hey, simple. Okay, so here's my plan. Each bag has exactly the same thing. Each bag has an amp, a coaxial 6x9 with a crossover, obviously, and a component 8 inch speaker. So my plan is I'm going to have one amp driving the 6x9s and one amp driving the 8 inch. And to make that all happen, it's going to be these bad boys right here. It's a heavy duty automotive 12 gauge wire, 4 prong, waterproof. Not exactly quick release, but it's uh, it'll do the job. So I will take one side of the 6x9 amp will go straight to the crossover of the 6x9 in the bag with it. The other side will go to one side of that plug through a harness through the bike to the a plug on the other side then into the 6x9 on the other side. Same with the 8 inch it will come out of the 8 inch or the amp that's driving the 8 inch. One side will go straight to the 8 inch speaker in the bag with it. The other side will go into the other side of the plug through the harness to the plug on the other side and then into the 8 inch on the other side. Simple! All 
All right, so the plan is to run it pretty much the same as it was before the speaker went in. I'm gonna run it along the bottom, come up the front here to where the plugs are on the bike. But now it's on the outside and it's seriously close to the exhaust. So I picked up some high temperature harness tape and uh, I'm gonna wrap it probably just the bottom, bottom, bottom little bit, one foot here or so. So, but I'm not gonna do it right now because I have some more wires going in here. Have I mentioned how much I love this octopus? Well, it wouldn't be an octopus. Uh, it's a quadpus, a clamptopus. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roseville, New Jersey, for turning me on to this. Uh, I believe it was the soldering iron video, and I saw that and went, "What the hell is that? I must have it." So I hunted one down and cuz like literally 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 for 10 years I've been I've been using this thing. And it's been working, but why have two clamps when you can have four? So uh yeah, if you haven't seen Carlos's videos, you have to go check them out. If you are even remotely, well if you're watching this video, what the hell are you doing watching this video? Go watch Carlos's videos because he's way smarter than this. We'll return to a crane operator's slow descent into insanity after these messages. Okay, back to work. And there we go. Now I did have to change this loom out from half inch to three quarters there was no way of making it smaller. I mean, even if I'd taken the casings off the speaker wires, half inch was still a bit too tight. And it's got a couple of layers of tape on there, so it looks pretty thick, but uh, I know it's well protected from the exhaust. And I'm lucky, because it just, just barely touches the bottom of the shock boot. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Time will tell if this was a good idea or not. Uh, the one problem that I am having is that my little clamshell that goes over the loom where it goes into the bag, it doesn't fit anymore. So I have till spring to come up with an idea for that. 